Ever wondered why some people achieve extraordinary success while others struggle? In this video, I will go over nine steps that I adapted in my journey to get ahead of 99% of people. I moved here a couple of decades ago with my family for a better life, with an aspiration to succeed and make the best out of our lives. As I was looking for ways to succeed or perhaps cheat codes to succeed, I ended up with a plethora of success advices circulating around. I found myself standing still with all of this as they were hard to either relate to or hard to resonate with. I had to take a step back and look at the bigger picture and simplify it for myself. I had to debunk the common cliches and set the extraordinary apart from the ordinary. By the end of this video, you will realize that it's not about the generic advices that you've heard all these years that will get you there. I realized that as I was digging more deeper into this. Hi, my name is Tessie Rivers. I'm a realtor and a diversified investor based in South Florida. And on this channel, I make finance related videos to get to the 1%. Feel free to jump around the timestamp below if you'd like to save some time. And while you're down there, consider hitting the like and subscribe button below. Unfair start. I'm sure you've heard this term, life is not fair. Similar to that, some of us has unfair advantages. None of us can control if you're born in a rich family or poor. However, you and I can and have full control of how our life will turn out to be, whether we are going to be rich or poor. Similar to that, some people have better connections and resources than you and I. That should not be the roadblock in our path to success. I realized that I had to accept my shortcomings and work towards either making it better or to simply utilize other resources to move forward. The journey must not stop. For instance, when I started my YouTube channel, I taught myself how to film, lighting, editing, script writing, and I'm still learning to make this video something that I would want to watch. However, one part that I was struggling with was thumbnail designing. When I say that I'm bad at Photoshop, that would be an understatement. I really suck at it. Now, I can teach myself how to use Photoshop. The resources are readily available. But the problem with that was the time constraint. Researching for these videos, writing script, shooting for these videos, then editing requires a lot of time beside my own personal obligations and work and life in general. Now, I could have spent the time teaching myself how to use Photoshop which required the time that I didn't have or accept the fact that I'm not proficient at it and simply outsource that part of it so that I can help myself move forward, achieving the goal and see the bigger picture. And just like this, there are multiple unfair advantages that I was able to pinpoint at a very early stage of my life and accept it. I had to either make myself better at it because other options are not available or simply utilize other resources to get to my goal. Dare to defer. This is the period when I started accepting the power of my unconventional thinking. Yes, there were times when I was a laughing stock because of my ideas and majority of the people around me never understood. I'm pretty sure they still don't. I had to accept and adopt the idea in order for me to get ahead of the 99% of people, I had to challenge the status quo and go against the flow. But just understanding this wasn't enough as I had to also cultivate the habit of taking actions, questioning the common ideas of societal norm, exploring the ideas which were unpopular and daring to think outside the box. This realization came after the book of Elon Musk's biography. As eccentric this guy is, if you really think about it, every single one of the companies that this guy is involved in, they're revolutionary and completely out of the box. For instance, before Tesla, electric cars weren't sexy. SpaceX started because he understood that the cost of delivering one pound of material to space is too expensive and he wanted to bring it down. The company's business model is based on reusability of its rocket, which helped him bring the cost from $10,000 per kilogram to $2,500. These type of out-of-the-box thinking got him to where he's at today. These type of unconventional ideas don't come to reality without proper research, validation, and refining them. In order for me to achieve that, I had to surround myself with knowledgeable and diverse thinkers who has been through the same struggle as I was and am going through and how they have accomplished their goals and overcame their obstacles. Worth the wait. But just like majority of the people, I was also impatient, thinking why I wasn't achieving my goals as quickly as everyone else. Every single one of the success videos that we watch or read about, it only glorifies the result. However, they fail to promote the idea of the struggle and the time that it takes to achieve the goal. It took me a while to understand that success isn't about the instant gratification, as it is a long-term game. I have a belief that if it comes too easy, it won't last long. Every single one of the achievements of my life, professional or personal, came with a lot of work and struggle. Nothing was ever handed to me. And I believe it's a blessing in disguise. The ones that comes harder tend to last longer than whatever you achieve very easily. Think about Warren Buffett. He did not become Warren Buffett in just one day. In his early years, 
he was able to pinpoint the companies that has long-term potential, invested into those companies, and now he became who he is. But I'm sure in his journey, he had to face a lot of failures and learn from it, as I have as well. My finance knowledge, everything that I've learned, are from my mistakes. And I believe these are the learning curves and stepping stones that is helping me reaching my goals. I'm not going to lie, this journey does come with a lot of frustrations and criticism. I feel frustrated and wanted to step away and quit. However, picking myself back up and never losing the sight from my goal and sticking with the plan getting me closer to my goals every day. The way I've done that is by started embracing the criticism, good or bad, whether it's constructive or not, doesn't matter. I started listening to every single one of the criticism and build the habit of tuning out the ones that are not constructive and not coming from a good place and focus on the ones that are constructive and from the people who genuinely care or been through the same struggles as I have. Working on those criticisms and accepting my mistakes are helping me on a daily basis in achieving my goals. One of the struggles that I'm facing is about 97% of the viewers of my channel are not subscribers. Now, I have a goal to grow this community 1000 strong by the end of the year. And I need your help with that. Join the community by subscribing below, beyond the surface. Now, sometimes these constructive criticizers often turns out to be our mentors. They genuinely care about our success. I was lucky enough to get a mentor at a very early age. And one of his advice still echoes through my head. He said, success is not an accident, which at the time, I didn't really understand the true meaning of it. To me, I thought every single one of the successful people were just lucky. They had everything handed to them. But as I was getting older, and a little bit more mature, I realized that it's not an accident and it just doesn't show up. There's a lot that goes into it behind the scene. The hard work, the struggle, sometimes trauma. I had to gain the wisdom to evolve the definition of success for my own self. Every single one of our journeys are different. Therefore, the definition of success has to be different for every single one of us. You have to find out what's yours. Once I found the definition of what success actually means to me, I had to make sure that my values were reflected on it. And if my actions towards achieving it aligns with it. Goals that haunt. Dismiss the adage, it's the participation that counts. As hard as it to believe, but life's reality demands a hunger for victory. You and I are on a journey. Let it be our own personal journey. In real world, result in collaboration is what that values. Unlike the education system that often misguides us with its punitive measures against collaborative efforts, it requires an obsessive focus that sometimes will deviate us from the work-life balance. I have an obsessive personality. Sometimes my goals haunt me in my dream, feeling an unyielding drive to outdo anyone else. And this is the exact same mindset that comes from the sports realm. If you ever watch Kobe Bryant's The Goat's interview, you will see how obsessive he was with bettering himself on a daily basis. Instead of practicing when everyone else was practicing, he was hours before everyone else on the court and leaving after everyone else. The same thing goes with Cristiano Ronaldo. These people have obsessive drive to achieving excellence, the 99% illusion. Once I dug deeper into this, I understood the equilibrium of the world. See, the world's equilibrium hinges on producers, and consumer dynamic. Indulging consumerist tendencies is human. You and I, we are consuming every day, every hour, every second that we are awake of our lives. Our attention is being fed by the 1% of the population. And once I understood that, I shifted my mindset towards the producer end of the spectrum. See, these are the few handful of people that fosters and produces the rest of the 99% consumerism tendencies, which ends up making them a foster of wealth accumulation in return. Once you shift this mindset towards the other end of the spectrum, you're already halfway there. Driven by curiosity, I was able to see that because I was always inquiring and willingness to learn and the acceptance of the idea that learning should never be stopped, no matter whichever stage you're in. There's a very interesting thing that I've heard on Colin and Samir's podcast. If you don't know these guys, you should check out their channel. They're great. They got a call from Mr. Beast once and Mr. Beast spent hours talking to them about what they have learned, what mistakes that they've made. Now, Mr. Beast and Colin and Samir are hold apart on their YouTube career respectively. But the fact that Mr. Beast or Jimmy wanted to talk to them and his willingness to learn, that shows his success is very well deserved. The 1% mindset. Now, contrary to popular belief, people always tend to advise to disassociate yourself from the net worth obsession. Success is a blend of skills, wisdom, self-assurance, and master over time. Completely agree. But for me, I'm a very tangible person. My goals have to be tangible. That's something that I can 
see, look, or perhaps touch. So even if you have to have a net worth that you wanted to achieve in order for you to achieve your goal, by all means, go ahead and do that. So have I. One example often used as an entrepreneur prowess isn't solely defined by their net worth, but the challenges overcoming their journey. But everyone fails to understand that the entrepreneur's main objective is to achieve the goal that they have set for themselves, whether it's to be the net worth or anything else. Money and finances have always been a taboo topic. When I was digging for ways to get on the 1% side, that I had to embrace the positive money mindset and understand the abundant nature of it. The positive mindset changes the perspective and enhances the boldness of my financial negotiation. It propels the generous side of me. I realized that the more I was giving, the more I was getting. And that has become the bedrock of true wealth. Endless pursuit. Now see this quest of moving forward. It's a continuous journey and it never ends. I often get the criticism that I'm never satisfied. I used to take it in a bad way, but then I realized that once you're satisfied with what you have, that stops you from moving forward and you live in that exact same spot. For me, Life is about moving forward. It's a continuous journey with exploring, validation, and executing unconventional ideas. If we lose the curiosity of our goals and success and stop learning, we will settle with what we have and we will never be able to move forward and get to the true potential of what our life can offer. There you have it. The ninth step that I adopted in my journey of getting ahead of 99% of people. Let me know in the comment section below if any of these points have resonated with you or just simply share your criticism, whether it's good, bad, constructive or not. As I mentioned before, I listen to everything. If you want to learn more about the mistakes that I've made on budgeting, watch this video here. Thank you for hanging out with me. See you in the next video. The company's business model is based in reuse of you. $10,000 per, per, blah, blah.